And I'm David Smith. I'm with a local agency called McClanahan Brewer, and we've been doing tech B2B marketing for about 20 years. Lately, we've been helping our clients understand how the impact of mobile devices and social media will impact their branding. And I'm going to share some of the basic concepts that we share with them with you, and hopefully everybody gets something out of it. Well, it's the same old B2B marketing cycle we've always had. It's very long. There's lots of people involved. There's tons and tons of information that has to pa uh, pass hands. And more and more people going out looking for the information themselves. So your information, your content, it's even more important that it gets out there. Well, what kind of content they're looking for? White hey, this is stuff we've been doing all along. That's the good news, all right? It doesn't need to change a kind of content. It's just the way that people are going to be getting to the content through these new technologies. So you look at mobile, on the left we have the little tiny screen, the smartphone, 80% of your B2B buyers are using the smartphone for business uses. And that's really the, the, um, for access outside of the office. It's a little screen when you don't have access to the bigger screen. Now the iPad was introduced less than three and a half years ago, and already half of the B2B users are using it to look at content. If it's why, because it's easy access for content and services. Two different, entirely different experiences. So let's talk about the smartphone first. I would say that the three things you need to worry about are email, video, and social media. Social media works great on a smartphone. Don't worry about that, all right? The apps are there, they're great. Video looks great on a smartphone. We always use it for watching baseball or things. But email's where you want to focus. And I went out and actually found some research to, to support that. This is from Europe, and basically the number two use of smartphones among business people for business uses was email. <laughs> number one was phone calls. I mean, crazy. <laughs> All right, so a little tiny screen, what's the other element? The big fat finger, this brand new amazing technology pointing device that we have to deal with in mobile. All right, so when you think about mobile and the smartphone, think little tiny screen, big fat pointing device. What that means is your emails need to, need to start looking like they can be scrolled and viewed on a, smart, on a smartphone, and that means responsive design. On the left is how the email looks on a desktop, on the right is how it looks on a smartphone. Big buttons, big images, scrolls up and down, very easy to consume. Now let's look at the tablet side. It's entirely different. All this stuff, all this stuff works on a tablet already, all right? Your job's done, right? Well, not exactly. You still need to help people with tablets find your content. So you need to go back to, again, the elements of responsive design. How are you going to use a big fat finger to get people through your website, all right? Big images, big buttons, one or two columns. That's why you're seeing websites getting really long. It's the influence of tablets and tablets on design and that experience. Once you've gotten your websites better for tablet using, you can move on to developing apps to deliver content. Like this example from IBM, they created, an app, created this app. All they're doing is serving up the content they already make. Their videos, their case studies, their white papers come through this app. All right? You notice there was a video on that app, right? B2B audiences love video. There's lots of research showing that they watch videos, that they share videos. This is fantastic use of content. But what do they do after that? It's just as important. They go research your product. They'll visit your website or contact you. 42% of B2B buyers say they've actually bought a product after watching a video. And what else is great? Videos look good on all your screens, your little screens, your medium screens, and your big screens. And they're very easy to share, which leads me into social media. 72% of B2B buyers using social media to research a solution for purchase, for purchase decisions, all right? Now, some people doubt whether B2B is used in social media, but it is. It is happening. And these are the things that they, people are saying they want through social media. They want to get answers to their questions. All right? The bottom three, I think, are the special opportunity for B2B markets now. It's the sharing. It's the reviewing. It's the feedback and opinions. All right? People are sharing content. B2B buyers are sharing content on LinkedIn. See LinkedIn, second from the top bottom there, that long red line? Over 70% are sharing content with their peers on LinkedIn. Right above that is Twitter and Facebook. Right, that's huge. That's the example. I have a great example of how to build a community on my Tumblr, most amazing Tumblr, and that shows how you can bring together a B2B audience and get them sharing content with each other around your brand. And this builds a really strong affinity for your brand and really strong preference and awareness. Well, what do B2B buyers get out of the social media? Well, this is what they say. Higher satisfaction, willingness to recommend, higher likelihood to purchase. I don't think you can say more about a, a branding strength than that. So it all boils down to we're in the information business. You need to be in the right place at the right time with the right content. And these are some ways that mobile and social helping B2B uh, marketers do that. So thanks for listening.